Hello everyone, welcome to this weekly charting analysis, the first one for 2015. Uh, my name is Jasper Lawler, Mark Analyst here at CMC Markets, and the webinar is going to be about half an hour, looking through some of the important charts, patterns and levels, um, alongside some of the fundamental drivers uh, for the week in terms of the, uh, the main asset classes that, that we trade here. Um, any kind of questions at all, feel free to send them through to the, the chat or Q&A boxes and I'll um, get to them uh, as soon as I can. So, um, it's, uh, yeah, like I said, the, uh, the first major trading week of the year. Some of you uh, keener members out there might have been um, trading on Friday. It was obviously the first trading day, but um, yeah, really this is when it all kind of kicks into gear again. And it is a non-farm payrolls week uh, for those of you who uh, trade currencies especially, but also the, the U.S. markets, and obviously it just affects all the global markets. Uh, we had quite a blowout in the last number, and uh, subsequently had a pretty blowout U.S. GDP number. So you know, it's uh, certainly going to be an interesting one. And a by the by is that we have our non-farm payrolls webinar going um, this Friday, covering the whole event live. I'll uh, mention a bit more details towards the end. Um, the the big one overnight though has not been so much the um, not so much U.S. oriented, but over here in Europe, uh, those of you following the euro will have seen that um, it's crashed down below 120 and now hit nine-year lows right down in around the 118 mark. It's pulled back a bit since, but just interesting to have a look at this chart, which I think has been referenced on the far ch chart forum a few times here. Um, but it's, uh, it's the 200-month SMA on the Euro US dollar and a rising trend line, both of which have been broken, which is quite significant because that's been holding up prices, like I said, for about nine years now. Um, so that's quite a big technical deal. So everyone, obviously everyone's been talking about the prospect of um, quantitative easing from the ECB for a while. Also, there's just the weak U European economy uh, as reasons for a decline in Euro, but. To, to get through these levels is showing kind of an extra level of uh, um, you know, enthusiasm, if you like, for um, for selling the euro. And um, obviously, these these Greek um, upcoming elections are not helping the issue. And uh, so this, yeah, this is quite big. So where where the market closes this week and then this month uh, will be will be big. Um, if it you know even if it closed around current levels it would um, still be pretty significant, be a definite b technical breakdown. And we can see just on the, on the shorter term chart, well, on the daily chart, um, we were in this kind of consolidation phase, but um, mid-November, we pretty much traded out of it, and then just these last few trading days, um, the last, you know, over the weekend, it was it was Mario Draghi with uh, the usual sort of jawboning <coughs> of, the, of the currency uh, and the prospect for quantitative easing. <coughs> That uh, that sends it lower, uh, you know that alongside uh, these the, the the latest failed Greek presidential election, which is leading through to uh, a snap general election, um, uh, which a lot of people are expecting to be won by sort of a disruptive anti-austerity, anti-current EU type measures party, which could result in Greece leaving or getting chucked out of even the the eurozone, which is obviously kind of disruptive. So you know, so this is a, a fairly clear-cut trend right now, and it's um, you know it's uh, it's way below these uh, daily moving averages. And when you've got an acceleration trend like that, you know if you're trying to catch this wave, a bit a bit late on at this point, but still you know you want to ride the, the trend, then you, you know you've probably got a shot um, drop down to the, the shorter time frames. And uh, already a couple of times the price has failed to even get back to 120, that key breakdown level. But uh, nevertheless, we saw quite a strong reversal off the, um, the overnight lows. There's still a bit of a prospect for a, a bounce back, perhaps towards this MSMA. But you can see it's accelerated away a bit. Maybe you know that that was the last kind of deceleration down, and you just saw it kind of steadily wound down until the next drop. So we could see another one of those. So if that is to be believed, then probably we're not even getting above these highs again, around uh, 119.75. Should we get above those again? Then that's when it, you know there's a bit more of an opportunity to perhaps sell at higher prices. Um, 
a notable one would just be that former kind of consolidation area here, which is probably better. I've drawn a, uh, you know, a, a horizontal line and a um, declining trend line. I think the, the declining trend line probably fits it the best. And um, so it'd be somewhere along those lines. I don't know. I think that's probably the best. Only a couple of touches, but you can see it kind of was uh, broke and retested there. So should we get a move above here, then we could be looking up here, but really, obviously, the, the, trend, the trend is down. Worth also, while we're, we're you know while we're looking at the um, the euro, worth having a look at uh, the euro Swiss because obviously the other big move that's happened in, in central banks happened late last year was the move by the um, the Swiss national bank to uh, to go to negative interest rates. Um, so that's the kind of volatility that you can expect um, based on these on that <laughs> on this. Uh, kind of movement. I don't know if that that is probably not a greatest example for me to be showing you right now. Um that doesn't look quite right. Nevertheless, this was the move after um the uh, the announcement of negative rates and as you can see it's it's moved the Euro Swiss right out of um the uh that kind of one twenty handle that the um the Swiss National Bank have pegged against the uh the Swiss franc. So that you know, that's one to keep an eye on, and um, the subsequent meetings from the S&P. Obviously, we don't have one just anytime soon, but certainly that you know that that's going to be interesting in relation to how likely it becomes that the ECB engage in QE, because that really, even though the Swiss National Bank kind of in it, you know, in a sort of side manner blamed the crisis in Russia for the increased currency flows into a safe country like um, Switzerland. Really, it's um, the euro getting sold off on the potential debasement that would come from QE that's the, their, their biggest threat. So the more QE becomes likely from the ECB, uh, you know, the Swiss National Bank may even have to engage in a similar program themselves, which they wouldn't be able to match in size. But, um, you know, the, the peg against the 120 is going to have to get more vigorously defended. And, um, you know, the negative rate has been enough for now. But whether it can keep going is um, is, is a different um, different question. Um, what would be the fundamental drivers for the euro going forward? Well, on the 7th of December, um, which is Wednesday, we have the uh, the flash CPI, the first release of the euro eurozone CPI, and there are some calls for that to go officially into deflation, which is obviously what's been trying to be avoided this whole time, and the ECB have been um, you know, throughout have been saying that there is no risk of deflation, um, you know, just prolonged low inflation, and that's enough for them to act. Well, now we're actually getting to genuine deflation, not on an annualized, you know, uh, you know, not not over the last year, but month, you know, month to month. Um, it's you know, it's going to turn negative, which isn't, um, you know, it's not not a good thing, certainly. <coughs> You know, it uh, damages confidence in businesses to be able to invest in the future if they think that the you know the prices that they're eventually going to be able to sell for are, are coming down. Um, you know, stable prices are really ideal. Don't want runaway prices, but you certainly don't want really falling prices. Um, another sort of uh, European event later in the week. Um, there's a few industrial production numbers, but really, as per normal, it's the German one that counts. So that one will be worth watching, but really it's, you know, the, in terms of trade in the euro, it's just all about the ECB, comments from the ECB members, and, um, you know, the fundamental data that's going to drive it, which i.e. inflation. And with uh, with oil prices acting the way they are, down another 3 plus percent today, as you can see on the platform. Gamma is actually crushed. Um, you know, that's, that's that affects inflation. It doesn't affect core inflation, which obviously strips out um Energy, food and energy prices, but um, that's not actually how the ECB gauge their uh, their policy. So if we have a quick look at oil prices now, I've got WTI up on my screen, which I follow the most. But you can see this was the kind of the the great white hope here was that actually 55 could prove the the level needed to hold up WTI because you can see it just it just didn't actually. This is a four-hour chart. 
couldn't even get above the 55 period average on the four hour chart and eventually it's just you know it's just started and it fell below re retested that line a couple of times and the 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 um the tr the, uh, the moving average and you know we'll drop them back again and uh, 50 dollar oil is looking like an imminent prospect for uh, for WTI um so any pullbacks you know we could look at um just that form of consolidation area and again you've got to look at pretty short term charts to kind of deal with this stuff um you know, it's which one of these lows? They obviously they don't quite correspond. This would be, I mean, down here this level's already been. That's what we tested here. We're moving lower again, so that may that may be as good as we get. But you know, higher price. This is obviously the better price that you're going to get. Um, this is the more aggressive entry down here. Keep in mind this this moving average, which has worked fairly consistently as a source of resistance. So if you're going off that, then it might be closer to this. Uh, by the time prices get up there, the average is probably going to be in that vicinity. And then, you know, chalk on a moving average, that, that looks around, not probably 50, well, let's have a look. Um, I don't think it's quite 50%, it's probably maybe the 38. It's yeah, it's in between the two. So that would be, you know, an area for pulling, for trading on a retracement. But obviously, the momentum's down, so if you're trading on the break of lows, there should be a few opportunities coming up as we trend lower. Uh, Brent, um, oh, that's uh, just crossed below 55 for the first time today. Um, not the first time, obviously, but it, uh, in, in terms of uh, multiple, in terms of recent history. Um, this is the larger chart I pull up every now and then, and um, you know, do this line, and when we were back up it here, and literally just a couple of weeks later, we're actually looking at testing this trend line now. It's only had two prior tests, but this is a monthly chart, so it does have a good amount of significance to it. Um, so that's where we're getting into now, and it does correspond with this sort of um, the consolidation area here, where we had a few spike lows, and then eventually broke lower from that. So if we're not to get to the lows at $35 a barrel, which obviously took place during a financial crisis, uh, which, you know, even though global demand is slowing right now and obviously production is increasing, we're not in a financial crisis. So you wouldn't think we're getting to $35 a barrel, but you know, it's certainly possible. The Saudi oil minister has said that they're absolutely fine increasing or maintaining their production levels at $20 per barrel. Um, so they're, you know, they're the intentions within OPEC um, are to dr you know, just let prices drop and flush out the US producers um, run them out of business, and then uh, you know maintain their market share, and eventually prices will correct itself. Um, peak oil will come back in, and uh, you know we'll see higher prices again. But you know that's the, so we've got an interesting level coming up, and that again kind of, kind of corresponds with the 55-ish and, and 50 dollars in um, in Brent, the global benchmark for oil. Uh, so we've got a bit of currencies and commodities first. Oh, well, since we are doing that, we're just going to touch on um, sterling. Uh, that also touched 17-month um, lows, I believe. Um, and so you can see that's kind of this is a, a weekly chart. So these are the kind of big levels to always obviously have in mind. You don't have to necessarily have them drawn in, but if you just check back to them every now and then, which is kind of what I was doing here, <coughs> this was big three touches back in uh, 2012 and before. And that's where we're kind of pulling off a bit at the moment. Um, but you know, if we can't hold this, then obviously these are you know this is the um, the obvious target with the um, this sort of I'm using the first low here, but you could use the bottom. But it's certainly in that 148 type vicinity with obviously the round number of 150 just above it. But again, the trend is very much down. We had some weak construction data today. That's not the be all and end all, but it is worth noting that um, uh, just on that kind of housing side of things, the housing sector was a big driver of the recovery. And you know, the pound was the reason for this big move higher in the pound was just because the you know the UK was the best performing economy in the in the G7, and um, you know, going great guns outstripping growth in America up until recently. Um, 
but um, the sort of political unrest associated with the uh, Scottish referendum and the likes, and now the general election where the results are very much uncertain, and, and also you know, what I was what I was just about to get at was the um, you know house prices were soaring, and now they're coming off, and um, you know the housing sector was important to the, the UK recovery, one in terms of the sort of wealth effect associated with just having a higher valued house and being able to uh, revalue, uh, you know, readjust your mortgage to lower interest rates, gives you a bit more money in your pocket, and just the employment that it gave to, um, to uh, you know, um, estate agents and to, uh, to the building trade um, was a big boost. So that's, the house prices have been coming down for a few months, uh, mortgage applications have been down multiple months, and, uh, you know, now construction, you know, for at least one month has been um, has been turning lower. So that's that's a factor. Uh, shorter term basis. Um, so that that's the longer term level that I had drawn in there. But here's our you know here's our kind of consolidation area that we were in. You know, this was the the low. You see, we kind of break down, touch, touch again. It's a sideways consolidation. You know, that's the low. We dip a bit below. You know, these things are not perfect, but you, know, you can see generally what we're dealing with here is that downtrend, we move into a sideways consolidation, dip below it, retest, now we just fall off a cliff. So you know, if you benefit of hindsight, if you had to trade at the uh, the former low there, the bottom of the range, you know, that's that's point perfect. Not point perfect, but you know, it's what is all you need. Um and it's holding below that, that moving average and it hasn't even got close to the uh, the fifty five day. And you can see here just as a note on the RSI, not got above the fifty for quite a while, you know, since basically the end of the uptrend. So that four hour RSI 50 level is proving quite a significant area of uh, resistance. And it's one to keep an eye on if you are going to go long cable for the big reversal of this trend. You know, you, you know, you obviously can buy into falling prices or you can wait for a bit of a confirmation, one of which would be a move above the 50 in the um so I'm talking about four hours it's like it's the daily RSI. Um in you know, this daily RSI has obviously capped the prices. If a move back above the fifty in the daily RSI would be to me uh, uh, the one of the signposts that the trend's reversing, but for now it's very much down. And uh, obviously just a matter of picking your spots. This is going to be quite a big pullback at this point, back to here. Um obviously it's a fairly conservative entry, not you know you um, your risk is above here or above there, but um, the you know, the move essentially has already happened. If you like, the the opportunities have been kind of been missed for this. So then we're waiting for the next sideways move for the next one, if indeed it does happen. Um, back to over to commodities again, um, just world one currencies and commodities. Um, <coughs> this is gold. You know, gold. Um, you know, it's it's kind of um, really the the reason for the big rally was the potential for hyperinflation, people protecting their assets, financial crisis, uh, people went to safety. Obviously, stock market booming for uh, going on six years now, and there's really not much need for gold when you know all your other assets are doing so well. <coughs> so, you know, gold prices have come down accordingly. But another correlation. Not just um, you know one correlation with gold is the stock market. The stock market goes up, gold tends to come down. Um, the other uh, correlation is uh, gold with the, the Fed and ECB balance sheets. It was the Fed that really kicked off the fear of inflation that helped gold prices. Um, but actually, in the latter stages, it was more related to the ECB. And there's a we've posted charts, um, and I think Colin has quite recently our analyst in Canada. A, a chart relating the ECB balance sheet to the price of gold, and that, there's a strong correlation there. So, if the ECB, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of what's going to happen this year does rest on what the ECB does. Um, uh, so, if the ECB do engage in some um, sovereign asset purchases, really expand their balance sheet, um, that's money being printed right there. And um, you know, in a, in a time of money printing, you, you people will go to gold. Well, at least they have done in the past. So, you know, that goes some way to explain why we've got this 1800 level. We, you know, we went crashing through it, 
we're right down to, I mean, it doesn't look like it on this longer term chart in terms of some of the, the moves that we've had, but, you know, nevertheless, was a $50, $80 move if you look on the, the shorter term charts. But we just didn't get that. We know we got into just above 130, uh, 1.130, and we've pulled back way above 120, and we're back at this key 1, 180 kind of level. Um, so, you know, if you, here you think, okay, it's been broken, but really you look at the longer term charts, it's not especially been broken. Uh, you know, it's, here's the weekly chart and the monthly. Do we even get a close below there? We barely did, you know. Uh, we did, but um, you know, this is not the most solid break. You know, this is really what we're talking about here, the kind of the flag on the, the monthly charts, and they're what count, and this candle was pretty disruptive to this being a big breakout. It could st certainly still could happen, you know, if we're looking at sort of an A, B, C kind of correction, it's very simplified, or just a, you know, just a bare flag, bare pennant, now you'd be looking at down here, it's so it's eight hundred dollar. I mean, I've done a, um, a video on this previously, on you know the projection for gold, and I think I had around six hundred odd as a, as a potential price target. Obviously, um, you know, not banking on that at this point, but it's it's a it's a pattern that's um, you know worth considering. But you know, if the ECB engage in QE, my tendency to believe is that that's going to be supportive of gold. Even though you'd think that it's, um, you know, a more bullish case for the U.S. dollar, and obviously that is a counterpoint, but um, gold against the euro certainly is going to improve, and I think even against the U.S. dollar. Um, so back over to equity markets. Um, just have a look at the um, U.K. 100. So. Now here's the, the short term level that we've just kind of broken through, but to give that a bit of context, this is really the line that I you know, I had it genuinely had it in and that's what we've that's what we've come off. I mean it's not it's not rocket science here. This was the sort of head and shoulders type double top that um saw us fall right down to just short of the low, the previous low. And it you know, that was a big level to break through. We've come back and that's what we've come back off. And because this was such a, a big rally higher on this daily chart, there's barely, there's barely a, um, a pullback to use as a sort of potential area of support. Um, so the, on the daily chart, there wasn't much to go by. All you really had was um, the low that was formed there, this kind of high breakout area, um, and we've, we've moved below that low as of uh, as of today. So. You know, that's, that's kind of a bearish development. Hit the EMA, boom, close right below it for the four hour. If we close below here for the day, you know, it's a bit ominous. And I would say we're probably moving back to this um, head and shoulders type neckline that caused us to break higher um, in December. You know, a couple of times now, it's like, say, you know, if you, look, if you want to see strength in a market, you know, what do you look for? It's taking out the highs. Rally didn't take out the highs rally didn't take out the highs uh, so each time we're making progressively lower highs here and admittedly the lows are not you know it's kind of a higher low there arguably as well obviously that's not but it's 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 a kind of bearish outlook uh, bearish sort of um, infused um, sideways market that we're looking at at the moment and if we treat this moving average as something significant or any kind of trend line you want to do through there you know, we've had this rising kind of wedge type pattern Big breakdown, big rally and retest, big collapse, attempt to come back. So, you know, this six six one hundred slash six thousand level is going to be huge if that breaks, because that all kind of puts into place as a kind of breakdown. But for the moment, we're in sideways trading. But you know, a breakthrough of those to me is significant. Um, keep it in Europe for now. We've got the uh, the Germany thirty. Um, similar looking thing, um, I think the four hours is a bit more instructive, but again, this is kind of where we broke down. It, you know, it's obviously looking a bit more positive in Germany, uh, and this again relates to that good old story about the, the ECB. Um, Germany's economy is certainly one of the stronger in, in Europe, you know, likely always will be, um, but 
it you know it obviously saw a rough patch it's kind of pulled back a little bit um it's it's still fighting deflation alongside the rest of Europe but it's got record low unemployment and you've got to believe based off the economic data in Germany there's not going to be much incentive for them to go along with a QE program um especially given their history of inflation in Germany <coughs> You know, it's embedded in their minds not to do this this kind of QE type program. So, it, if it does go ahead, it looks like it's going to go ahead um, without the consent of the Germans. You know, without the um, uh, without consensus. But uh, even though the uh, German government and arguably the German economy could do without QE, uh, the German markets are certainly looking for it. And uh, you know, that's why you're seeing the strength in the DAX last year. The DAX closed up. Uh, two percent odd. Um, the FTSE was down three percent odd. Um, you know that relative performance is largely due to the upcoming QE in Europe versus the wind down and potential rate hike in the UK. Um, so again, not not taking out the highs recently here, but did previously um, did make all-time highs above t ten thousand again. So more of a potential for just a little small back and jump back here. We, you know, this is a very indecisive candle on Friday, but you know that's kind of choppy, um, you know, uh, poor liquidity holiday trading. So not much to be ga to, to be garnered from that. Really, probably back down to this chart and whether we can take out these lows, which you can see have have been, um, you know, this t when you see kind of two points like that right off the same area, you, you know, you know that level is significant below there you know that's the kind of breakout point so you would be that one down towards these lows you know if you're looking for correlation between the Germany 30 and the FTSE you would argue that the Germany 30 is about to roll over but you know still I would argue the trend is generally higher you know the bias would be towards higher and you know this is the bottom end of the zone for um, the current trading market in terms of um, uh, um, the, this is the current price range um, so if you're expecting prices to remain in this range this is obviously the bottom end if you're sideways trading you buy in the bottom end you sell in the top end um, so just to finish off with US, um, US 30 and the SPX um, just worth noting I don't think this is necessarily going to play out but there is you know, largely it's, this is largely relating to the fact that we just had this such extended rally that prices did get very overbought, and now obviously this latest rally, which made a new high in prices, did not make a new high in RSI. Um, so I'm fairly, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not. I, I think it's probably not going to particularly play out. To, I mean, it has obviously already seen a sparked a correction. I don't know if it's going to go much lower towards. Um, 17,430 would be the next level for me to be keeping my eye out on, um, if not the moving average. But it didn't hold on too well in the, in the last correction. Um, but what 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 I think is a weak sign is that okay, it didn't make up these previously overbought levels, but it didn't even get to 70 before rolling over, which is the generally accepted overbought level for RSI. So that you know that. The the the, 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 the negative, uh, the bearish divergence alongside not meeting and not getting into an overbought area before a pullback, to me is is definitely some bearish signs. So, if you see another kind of jump and then another rollover, that would be some extra confirmation because then you would actually be literally getting the um, you know the failure to make a new price high as well as the RSI. Um, counter that to that somewhat is you actually see a bit of a on the shorter time frame you see um, I mean this same exact kind of I mean I've just used two different charts to paint the same picture really but you know same kind of uh, bearish divergence here on the daily chart but worth noting on the four hour chart it is actually quite a good little um, potential uh, double bottom in RSI alongside falling prices you know with quite a big Couple of, with a kind of large wick candle there, which we haven't really got below since. So I think if we can maybe even just get below these these levels here, 20.55 or you know or 20.62, 
that that would be the kind of break point to confirm this little double bottom pattern here with the, with the divergence. And obviously it's taking place alongside the 38.2. Should this not, you know, should this little um, bullish pattern not play out, we are seeing a significant divergent, uh, confluence of indicators here, the 61.8% uh, retracement of the Fibonacci uh, alongside this, uh, this high from the, um, from the 16th of December could make for an area of demand should prices drop again. Um, so that only leaves me to, to quickly go over, running over a little bit here, but I'll quickly to mention again that we do have the non-farm payrolls coming up on this Friday. Um, you know, we had a big number last time, big GDP result. Um, the, nevertheless, the expectations are uh, for a significantly smaller number, 241K is the expectation. Um, whereas last time we obviously had 321, so expected to be a bit of a bit of a slowdown uh, for December. Um, but you know, a lot of that kind of relates to the kind of hiring that goes t into the holiday season around Thanksgiving and around December, and then you know, once you're actually in December, you don't need to hire anymore. So it's a bit of a seasonal thing. Overall, the picture is pretty good, but you know, that uh, if the number is below expectations, it will definitely kind of um, or you know, pull, not pull the rug under, but um, remove a bit of the excitement that came in from that um, strong number last time and the strong US GDP. Okay, um, not seeing any questions here, so uh, thanks all, thanks a lot all for attending. Um, and uh, should you want to watch this again or pass it over to uh, friends or colleagues, um, it will be available on YouTube later today, and we'll post that on Insights. Thanks a lot. Jasper Wall signing off. Good luck trading.